Hi, I'm Alison from Ethic Scouts. The secret to successful forex trading is to have a plan and then to stick to it. In this video, I want to show you how to create a rough trading plan that you can customize to suit your trading needs. If you're new to trading, it's very helpful to have someone show you how to create a rough plan so that you can go about testing it out on a demo account and then customize it until it works for you. Only once you have gone about testing your strategy on a demo account and back testing your strategy, should you then open a live trading account. The first step is to choose your currency pair. Now, in a previous video, we spoke about focusing on five currency pairs. This allows you to become more familiar with these pairs and their specific behaviors and characteristics and how they behave in the market environment. It also helps you to prevent becoming overwhelmed with a plethora of options available on the market. As a quick overview, the major pairs are the EURUSD, the USDJPY, the GBPUSD, the AUDUSD, the USD CAD, the USD CHF, and the New Zealand dollar, United States dollar, NZD USD. These pairs are very liquid, which means that they often have lower spreads or lower trading fees. And it also means that they are less volatile. And we find that technical analysis on these pairs is much more accurate than on, for example, exotic pairs. One thing that you have to be aware of when choosing your pairs is that currency pairs do not always see the same levels of activity at all times. For example, you'll find that the markets are more active during the New York, London, and Hong Kong sessions, and particularly during the crossovers of these sessions. You also want to choose a pair that's active during during your trading hours. For example, if you are in a European time zone, then choosing a pair like the Euro USD, which will be active during the London and New York session, will provide more trading opportunities. Next, you have to understand the spread. Now, this is a very important matter in trading, and it can significantly affect your profitability. You need to basically have an idea of how much the market will move for you to still be profitable. So for example, if you have a small target profit in pips of 10 pips and the spread is two pips, the spread will be around 20% of your profit target, which is really high. And you need to be aware of this when you set your profit targets and stop losses. You also need to be very aware of choosing the correct trade size. Choosing the incorrect trade size could blow up your account very quickly. We always suggest not risking more than 2% of your capital per trade. This means that if you have a $1,000 account, you'll only want to risk $20. I'll place a link on how to calculate lot size in the notes below. Once you've defined your currency pairs, then you'll want to look at various brokers. Now, we've spent hundreds of hours reviewing brokers to find the best in the industry in terms of regulation and trust, in terms of trading fees. So the brokers we recommend will always have very low trading fees, in terms of education, in terms of market analysis, and in terms of customer service. I'll put a link in the notes below so that you can go and have a look at some options for brokers. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be using CTrader and TradingView. They're my preferred platforms. There are many others available. And I'm going to be demonstrating how to open trades on their demo accounts. So a good strategy for beginners is trading with a trend. This means trading higher highs and higher lows in an uptrend or lower highs and lower lows in the case of a downtrend. So once you've found your currency pair and you found a market that's moving or trending, then you want to perform multi time frame analysis. And we have a tutorial of how to do this in another video, and I'll place a link to that in the notes below. So, essentially, because I'll be trading on the hour time frame, I'll perform analysis first on the daily time frame. And as you can see here, there is a downtrend on the daily time frame. And I will put in my levels of support and resistance. These levels give you a good indication of where price will stop falling or potentially stop rising if it hits resistance. I draw these on the daily time frame and then I move to the hourly time frame and do the same thing. As you can see here, the daily time frame captured most of these movements. They also give you an indication of where to set stop losses and take profits. Now, because I'm trading a trend, you obviously need to look at whether the trend is up or down. This is clearly a downtrend. So I draw a trend line to connect the recent highs or the lower highs. And this will give you an idea of the strength of the trend and it gives you an idea of where price may meet resistance at that trend line. Next, you want to add indicators to your chart. I prefer using moving averages. So I use the 20 exponential moving average, the 50 exponential moving average, and the 200 simple moving average. These give you an indication of the direction and strength of the trend. If the price moves below all three MAs, as you can see here, and the shorter MAs cross over the longer term MAs, it provides a stronger indication of the trend. And you can see that this is what's happening here. Next, you can add the RSI. 
We have a video on this too, and this tells you whether an asset is overbought or oversold. And as you can see, the EURUSD strength is below 50, but it's not yet an oversold territory, which means that it has potential for further downside moves. So what is the signal for entering the trade? Well, as you can see here, a green candle forms, touches the resistance, and once this closes, you have the formation of a red candle, which indicates that the resistance has been respected. So it does not cross above that level of resistance. I open the trade at the close of this red candle. Now, if I want to determine my risk and reward, there is a great tool here that helps you to see how many pips and what the reward ratio would be. I'll set the stop here at this resistance at 54 pips above my entry and the take profit at one and a half times that of my stop loss at 82.2 pips below my entry. So my risk reward ratio is one to one and a half, which is a good risk reward ratio. It's quite a conservative risk reward ratio. So how do you place an order? Well, as I said, this is a demo account. So the order that I'm going to place does not actually correlate with the chart I've just been showing you, but it'll give you an idea of how to go about opening a trade. So as you can see, this is the Euro USD. Click on sell it gives you an order size. Then if you open an order of 10,000 units, you will only use $21.56 as margin because of the leverage over here. I would not recommend using leverage this high as a beginner trader because although it can magnify your profits, it can also magnify your losses. If you want more information on leverage, please check out our other videos. Links will be below. Then you can set your stop loss. As I mentioned, you can determine your risk and reward ratio. So I want a risk reward ratio of one to one and a half. So my stop loss will be at minus $21.8 and the take profit at $32.8. The pips will correlate with these two values. The spread here is 1.2, as you can see. And with the 0.1 lot position size, which is the equivalent of 10,000 units, this means that every pip is worth $1. So the spread takes up only $1.2 of the profit, which is reasonable. And as you can see, the trade works out as planned, and I take my profit at the bottom over here. Now, I know this was a very quick example, but it's a good example of how to open a trade and how to go about the process of analyzing what is happening in the markets. Now, there are many other intricacies that you also have to be aware of when opening your first trade. You do have to be aware of the fundamental factors. Please do not go open a trade when there is a news announcement that's about to be released. It can cause a big movement in the markets that you might not be aware of. So when you perform your analysis, just be aware of any other factors that might affect the market price. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Our website is fxscouts.com. And please remember to subscribe and like.